Yeah, after that I dropped another project called Do Em All Dirty, and I'm like, I just want to rap regular because I don't want these motherfuckers trying to like put me in a box. Mm -hmm. After that, bro, like, I went into like a whole depression about and everything. Mm. Like, I was in meetings, and it was like, yeah, this is good, but we want that. And I'm just like, these stupid you feel me? Mm. And I guess if I had seen what they see in me back then, I was just kind of like, I was so smart that I was kicking myself in the ass. Because the thing is, I was think I was putting my feelings in it because I'm so passionate about it. Instead of saying like, all right, let me just trick y'all into like what y'all think y'all want. Or let me just go ahead and do, they giving me the answer. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J-Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J-Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout-out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Mm -hmm. Let's get the interview started, man. For sure. Hey, what's pop? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Oh, man. We've been shooting. We've been here. The team is here. Um, Shout out to my guy, Mar here. Shout out to Kyron here. Shout out to my brother in the building. He's been pulling up morning after he's in the building. All right, we got a special guest. Oh, before we get to the guest, make sure you tap into the audio. Tap into the audio. If you're watching this, pause it. Go straight to the audio. Make sure you um subscribe to the Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google Pop, Google Play, and some other ones. I don't know, man. I, I'm listen. I'm, I'm working. We 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 working through the kinks. You get what I'm saying? You are gonna see some videos that might not look the best, might not have the best audio, but we working through the kinks. You feel me? This shit still look good. You know the vibes. We got special guests in the building. This guy, I've been watching this guy for a minute. He probably don't even know, but hey, man. Um, he's probably. I want to say alter ego. What is it when you wanna? He's like my. When you want to say something and people speak for you, spirit animal, spirit animal, yeah. bro. This dude say some of the slickest things by far. Appreciate it. I told y'all the other day I, I messed with partisan. Like that was one of my spirit animals. His party, yeah, partisan party hard. lyrics is crazy. Yes, this guy, yeah. they right there, bar for bar. Keem Ali is in the building. What up, dog? Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You bro. looking different. You got the braids. Hey man, I'm trying a little something. How long you had the braids? Just got him yesterday. Didn't even get my shit lined up. I just got him and was just like, fuck it. Yeah, I was confused. Oh, I mean, you came? I'm like, okay. This a different nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, um, first of all, you just dropped the uh, song. You just dropped the video. Mm -hmm. What was it? He's bad. Did you make the girls push the car? You, you you had it in drive. I had it in drive. Okay. I had it in drive. I told them that they wouldn't have to push it. And I actually put it in neutral the first time on the first take. And they was like, it's oh, damn, this hard as fuck to push this motherfucker. So I had to make it look like, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, that's some bullshit. I ain't trying to work y'all too hard, baby. Bro, you, you like, what's, tell me, you got to tell me the backstory, not why you got started, but how, like, where did you get this this swag from? Like, because this is some old school shit. I'm fucking with it. You know what's crazy? Like, I used to dress in high school, like, when I was in, let me see, from, shit, really from ninth grade. I used to wear, like, bow ties to school, and I was, like, one of the only niggas doing it. It was probably, like, me and another person or two people at the time but you gotta think when you got like three four hundred people in your class if it's only two rocking bow ties and dress mm -hmm. shirts with the loafers and the you pants you know what i'm saying yeah so it was like i just i guess i just been doing that but not even addressing <laughs> i'm talking about like the wordplay i feel like all of it is a swag i always had wordplay when i was rapping i started that because um wayne was probably my biggest influence with that you know what i'm saying i literally made like Wayne and Eminem my top five. I was sitting at home one day and I remember listening to this Eminem Zelda freestyle. I puke eat it and freak you. Battle want to weed it to speak to. The only key that I see to the feature would be for me to remove these two Adidas and, and he was snapping. I'm like, this shit hard. And I literally started writing and from that day I didn't stop. But that was like sound, 2009. Nothing, nothing like Lil Wayne. I know Boosie, we rock with yeah, Boosie. Yeah, hell yeah. It Boosie, don't sound Boosie, nothing. Boosie, Boosie, my spirit animal. Boosie, my spirit animal for a long time. I had That's a Boosie fade in that thing when I was little. That's my dog. I mean, yeah. I'm from Boston. We from Jackson. Yeah. Bro, I heard you say the other day. I mean, well, not the other day. I watched it the other day. I heard you say on one of your interviews, like, that was not your uncle. Like, that was that Boosie, was our uncle. I tell people, like, Boosie had a line in one of his songs that said, God forgive me, dog, but I'm the reverend of the ghetto. It was not lying. Yeah, like, nah, for sure. 
We did whatever Boosie said. Bro, that was he's the godfather. I mean, not uncle. Like he's like our godfather in Baltimore. Like yeah. for sure. Yeah. Hands down. It's, I feel it. But you know what? A lot of places probably feel like that too, though. Cause like he always used to say, like, he's he right next door to us. He's like Jackson, my second home. Mm -hmm. Then he comes somewhere like that. You yeah, know what I'm sure. saying? But like Baltimore, I didn't know nothing about like no Baltimore until I was like a grown. Like I'm, yeah. I'm from down here, like, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Like he got that type of influence. I, I don't feel like he get the the respect he deserved, but you only get it when you were like popping and relevant and in people's face all the time. Like, so let me ask you, you know what what's in? When he dropped Gangsta Grill, mm -hmm. what did you think about the Gangsta Grills? When did Boosie drop a Gangsta Grills? Was it recent? Nah, it was old. It was like um, I don't know. I the last time, it up. being honest, the last time I faithfully listened to Boosie was like right when he got out. I'm into like everything. You to it though? Did you like it when he got out? It was hard to listen. Yeah, nah, I ain't really it just hard. Rock with it. it. Was some songs on that motherfucker. Like he was doing his thing. Like when he came out with Show the World, I'm like, oh, damn. he went to jail and turned into a leaf. He finna come out and just start like, boom, boom, boom. Facts. And he was posting like, oh, I'm getting a hundred thousand a show now. I'm like, yes. He bought, he I mean, dropped Gangsta Girls in 07. 07. What was on it? Um, I'm pretty sure I was listening. So I actually, cause I was, I was trying to see how big of a Boosie fan you is. So I was a Boosie fan, mm -hmm. and. Same with you though. You was watching the DVD. You find a you find a fifty and here you pussy. Yeah, you feel yeah. me like watching the uh, Ghetto Story movie. Yeah. So like when I um when he dropped Gangsta Grill, to me people hate it because they hate my take on it because I said I ain't like it. I probably know the songs that was on it. Right. That's I can't point, even that's, tell you a lot of times what the um was it that um let me see I wasn't mad until the world forgot about me. Yeah. Let's believe I'm back. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, nah, that was snapping. That's I ain't like it. That was not. Nah, that was not. Nah. Only reason I ain't like the only it. thing I didn't like that they played this shit back too many times at the intro. See, not even that. Something like that version. Not even that. I like the songs. It's just I heard them before. So like it's from who? Him. Who? Oh, that's cool too though. Niggas recycle. Yeah, it so they. it wasn't recycled. I feel like Gangsta Girls like that's like I was just talking to them about this. Like so, Gangsta Girls really they come in they putting on for the. And that deserve to be put on for real. Yeah. So they really just playing his hits. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. to the so they they really open him. They really showing him to the world. Mm -hmm. But to his fans, it's like I already heard it. I'm thinking he about to drop all new takes. I ain't understand it back then. I was young. I, you know what? I feel that. But it was just like a, a business move. You know what I'm saying? And I done had sure. some of my folks in my ear like, enough people ain't heard like Kimi Casanova. You need to redrop. But I'm like, my fans ain't already heard. It. Like let's just get them folks something else and like keep that shit fresh and keep it new. So I, I feel that. Like, if you a fan fan, you really just be wanting something new, and you be thinking, like, that nigga ain't hard as I thought he was if he got to be repeating. You I ain't think me? that. I just was mad. I'm like, why they ain't just give him some new shit? I understand. I didn't. I was young. It's 07. And he probably gave them some songs because I done spent the block on some songs that I feel like didn't get the uh, due diligence that mm -hmm. they deserve. Like, this bitch was so hard. And we feel like that about some songs. We be like, man, they didn't get that nigga the due diligence he was due on that song. Like, he really right. killed you didn't want enough people feeling how I felt about it. Facts. So, so wait, yeah. you like the weekend? I don't dislike him, but I don't just listen to the weekend. Damn, I, I wasn't ever like a weekend fan. I ain't, I ain't hop on it. Jeez. Yeah. So it reminded me of the weekend he dropped a uh, tape called Trilogy. Yeah, Trilogy was literally the same as um, Echoes of Silence, um, House of Balloons, and there's another one. Y'all drop it in the comments. But uh, I mean, to me, that was probably three of the greatest projects ever. Like, and then he back, dropped back, back. Yeah, and then he dropped Trilogy. And it, it was really just all three of them on the same thing. But he had already got bigger. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah no. So, um, to your point, Lucky Day did something like that. I listened to Lucky mm -hmm. Day. And he dropped two or three EPs. The first one was called One. The second one was called Two. And the third one called Three. But when he dropped the album, it wasn't nothing but these songs that he had on the EP. Mm -hmm. And he turned it into an album. Me, what I did say was, damn, that's fucked up. I was looking for something new. But what I thought was, it's smart. Yeah. It's smart because you still get the same streams off of those um, songs, and it go towards like um, what the fuck, like a Grammy. Mm. Like you know, like so if I have, you know how people have two versions of one song. Talk to I'm just getting into it. Talk, talk, talk. So me let it. me see. Um, Break shit. it down for me. Hmm. All right. So your remix is a different song from your regular mix. Right. So if Ella Mae would have made a boot up remix, she can get a Grammy off of. Um, no, it it counts towards your uh, platinum status or your gold status. Oh, so it's, it goes to That's the, not the original Grammys, song I'm still, though. Yes, but it has to be the exact original song. If you change something, then that means that song will be platinum. Okay. Or like, So he came out with them three EPs, and one of his biggest songs was Roll Some Mo. If he had changed Roll Some Mo on the album and added something on the back end of it, 
it wouldn't have counted towards them other streams. You feel what I'm saying? No, no, I get it. I get it. So it's just like, yeah, Rosamo might have been going platinum or close to going platinum. Um, and if he changed something on the back end, it would have started that all the way over when people heard the album. So he got to put the same song on there for it to continue to add to those streams. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. So g- getting back to the question, right? Mm-hmm. Inspired by Eminem, inspired by Lil Wayne, inspired by Boosie, coming out of Jackson. Yeah. Um, again, I don't, when I hear any any four of those things, you don't hear it I don't in my hear music. You. Um, well, so I was inspired by them, but that don't mean I got to like, I guess in a, per se, sound like them. But it's times where I'm rapping and I hear every one of my influences. But I studied more than that. One thing I did do, even though these people were like my influences, I actually studied. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're inspired by your mom and your daddy, first off, you know what I'm saying, before you leave the house. Exactly. But what you do? You go to school and there's niggas around and you study what they're doing. You want to be like the cool kids at school. You want to figure out what they got that you don't and that also impacts you you know what i'm saying and you have to so i'm I, i'd like to say i'm just like a melting pot full of artists i can see that yeah for sure and i had to tell people like i can just i don't know i could just make that shit happen man like yeah bro yeah. now nah, you got some bro i ain't gonna lie it's like i be telling it's, re- it's 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 seldom i get people that I enjoy their music yeah and um you was definitely one of them like appreciate that. That. I, I listened to super bad today i was like Damn, I missed this one. Like, yeah, hard. Yeah, I rock with uh, of course the uh, the famous one now, Kimi Casanova. Yeah, I rock with yeah. that one. I mean, why did you just go and change your name to Casanova, bro? I mean, um, I got this thing, man, where like I actually made a a different page for that mm. content because I do different shit on my pages. Um, I don't want. I had to tell people I break it down like this. So, look at Martin when he in the show. Like, what was the funniest character in that show to you? Or your favorite character that he did? Um, that he did? Yeah. He was pretty good. Um, Roscoe was cool. Okay. Shanae was cool. Got you. I ain't gonna lie, he did his thing. Yeah, so why shouldn't he just change and his name Jerome. to why should why wouldn't he just change his name to Shanae or Jerome? It was a character. You know Jerome was one of the the, the, the flyest like I never knew this oh, until no, now. Clean. He was really like fly. Like I, I was he was just at, ugly as. F- yeah, I was looking at Trinidad James story, and they were saying like, I guess it was um, inspired by Jerome. Like, and yeah. I went back. Jerome really was fly. Next time you get a chance, watch Martin, and you study Jerome the character. He had the chain. He was really fly. Like he had some yeah. shit. But yeah, I, I he was it. like the MCM So Kimi Casanova was a character. Yeah. So like, um, sometimes I want to talk about regular shit that we do and that we're going through as a regular person and not from this perspective. Mm. Um, and I don't know if you didn't watch like my Instagram, I got these freestyles where I uh, put my hoodie on and it's like over any beat, one minute, mm-hmm. just strictly like battle rapping bars. Yeah. You feel me? Because I studied that and I'm a student of that shit. So it's like, how do I disassociate that from Kimi Casanova? And so like, the bigger I get, it'll get to a point where I'm gonna have to ask people like, who you want to interview today? Mm-hmm. Do you want a Kim Ali? Do you want Hoodie King? Do you want Kimi Casanova? And, like, let me know who you want me to come as before I leave the house. Because I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So You yeah. came as Casanova over the day. What I mean. You feel me? Because that's, that's, the, that's the mode I'm in right now. That's what I've been pushing. That's what I kind of want to. So one thing that, that stands out to me, bro, is the emphasis on the word bitch. Mm-hmm. Your girls, like the girls you deal with, don't ever like, have a problem with that? Because you be just calling them. Nah, I'm going to tell you the only time that I had a problem with something like that, and I don't, and I tell females, and I tell people, my folks know me, I don't talk to females like that in person. Mm. I wouldn't disrespect no female and call out a name. It's never a problem. They understand it's just music. And the only time it was ever awkward, I was doing this one video, and I was looking at this, to show you right video, and I was looking at this girl in her eyes, and um, we had to literally make eye contact the whole time, and it's my first time meeting her, and I'm looking at her like, I'm more concerned with you being cool with me shoving dick into the back of your throat. And she looking at me, and I got to keep a straight face while I'm saying this. And she just like, and I'm just like, <laughs> and after we, they cut, I'm like, you know, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying, just playing, right? And she's just like, oh, no, 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 you know, just go ahead. But, yeah, it gets to a point where sometimes I be in the video, and they looking at me, and I have to turn it. But, you know, they know. It's all out of, like, just from a harmless place. You ever, you ever did a video and a girl act too good? She acted too good. And it's like, whoa, you got to relax. Like, You know what? <laughs> you know what? I want to say my last one. Um, I guess in the pictures and, like, uh, pieces of the video, 
they like got really into it. Um, I have had like videos where like I feel like. So what I do is I put out like a um, I need females for a video, and I don't know if these people are just like, hey, I want to be in a video because you posted it, or like I've been watching you and I want you and mm -hmm. I want to be in a video. So it's been times where like they've been in a video, and been like, I've been waiting to get on this. And mm -hmm. rubbing me and like, and I'm thinking it's natural, but in their mind they may be like, yeah, I'm finna fuck my brother tonight. Yeah, facts. <laughs> you feel me? So I don't, I keep it professional though. My thing is while I'm here, I'm working, so I ain't focused on none of that. So if you are rubbing on me and making it look like you want to be here, it looks better for the camera. Right. So I'm not minding it, but in her mind she might be like, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of rub like. And I had females like touch like this area, and I can't like stop rapping like right in the middle of my video, and so I just kind of be like, hey. Wait, so you able to turn off your like, like your body while you rap it? Cause like, I mean, no, nah, my dick still get hard. It get hard, but I have to like, while I'm rapping and focused on that, I be like, you know, and when they say cut, I'm like, alright, bitch. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you wake this motherfucker up, you know how to put right. it to sleep. Yo, it's it's, it's crazy, cause um, yeah, like, especially when you like, got a situation going on. Yeah, man. <sighs> Nah, so um, with that, um, I don't always had to tell anybody I was with that like this stuff is just business, mm. um, and I try to be res as respectful as I can. Cause one thing about it, no matter how big you are, or how big you think you are, some people ain't as attracted to you as you think they are, or you, you're not as attractive to somebody as you think you are. So I don't like doing no creep or no weird shit. I ain't like forcing nobody to drink or saying like you gotta be this to do that. Like, just come. If I got some, I'm going to offer it. If you don't want it, fine. I really just need you to do this job, baby. Nah, facts. I don't really care about all that extra shit. So, like, yeah, the, the main thing with me is me being comfortable and making these females comfortable. And just, like, also, if, I, if I'm with somebody, making sure that they comfortable, too. Because there have been times where I didn't, like, one of my exes, I did a photo shoot, and she was like, who the fuck took these pictures in? Why did you let them take that? And that shit looks stupid. Why is her hand down your pants? I'm just like, they don't work it. Yeah, but to her, she just like, I don't give a fuck if you working. Like, this bitch got her hands in your pants and, like, you smiling in the picture. And it's just like, well, I mean, you're supposed to smile. <laughs> but that didn't mean I wanted it. It was just, you know. So, yeah, I didn't have to deal with all type of shit. But, Talk um, to me about um, the image versus, like, real life. You know, like, sometimes we see comedians uh -huh. and, like, every time we see them, we associate them as a comedian. Right? Yeah. Like, it's like you, like, for the most part, when I see you, um, I see the Casanova, mm -hmm. right? Like, do you have a lot of people who always see you as Casanova and, like, think you sweet for it or niggas look at you like, man, he a ladies, man. It's like, nah, bro, I'm really, like, I'm man, really, really not that one. You know what? I just say I'm everything they think I am. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. You know what I'm saying? Um... I can't stop people from thinking what the fuck they're going to think. But I just got to know who I am, and I got to know, like, what's really going on. You feel me? Um, yeah, man. Yo. But I, to answer your question, the difference between, like, regular person and this, like, yeah, sometimes I don't be feeling like dressing up all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't be feeling like like when when uh, we got the uh, text message earlier today, nigga, I'm in, like, joggers, a hoodie, and some forces. Like, and that's me every day just chilling. I was riding around in the car writing. You know what I'm saying? Putting songs and to beats and shit like that. Jotting down lyrics. That's like my little studio when I'm not in the studio. You feel me? So, yeah, it's just like I have to make this associate. Because if I came up in here, if I came in here, you know me for Casanova, but if I came in here 
dress like y'all, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't believe it. Or they'd be like, that nigga just be rapping like that. But when you can associate it and I, I get that vibe off, yeah. it's like it tricks your mind into, like, the brand. Oh, you feel what I'm saying? And now when you think smooth or when you think, like, somebody who going to smell good or somebody who going to put that shit on and look good, your mind automatically goes there. I know one nigga, he be clean all the time. But if you see me like this every day, you start to believe it because I'm tricking your mind. But when this is that hard for you? Like, God damn. It's been hard for me, but I'm learning how to make it work instead of, like, letting it bother the shit out of me. Like, I didn't want to do this Casanova shit. I did not want to do it. Like, a year ago, I literally was like, fuck this. I was bucking on niggas at, like, um, at my label. I'm like, bro, I don't want to do this shit. Like, these folks going to try to, like, pigeonhole me into this shit. I'm like, fuck that. Because... What they want ain't what I want, and what, it ain't what makes me happy with music. Wait. I had to get to a space where I was happy with it, and then I was comfortable. And I'm like, okay, bet. So wait, wait. A year ago, we talking. Literally this time last year. Wait, I'm trying to put a trying to put a time stamp for the people to understand. Are we talking '85 South Show? Or that was more than a year ago. Yeah, that was like uh, two years ago. Damn. See, I was tapping before that, so I've been tapping uh, longer than I thought I was. Was that December of 2020, or was it December? Matter of fact. That was two and a half years. That was two years ago. Okay. That was 2020. So that's so that's after that. So that's kind of after it picked up more. Because I'm assuming yeah. it had to pick up more from yeah. there. Yeah. And they probably, probably associated So that was December it. 2020. That dropped in 2021. My project dropped in 2021. And then, um, yeah, after that I dropped another project called Do Em All Dirty. And I'm like, I just want to rap regular. Because I don't want these motherfuckers trying to, like, put me in a box. Mm -hmm. After that, bro, like... I went into like a whole depression about this shit and everything. Mm. Like I was in meetings and niggas was like, yeah, this is good, but we want that. And I'm just like, these stupid motherfuckers. You feel me? Mm. And I guess if I had seen what they see in me back then, I was just kind of like, I was so smart that I was kicking myself in the ass. Mm. Because the thing is, I was thinking, I was putting my feelings in it because I'm so passionate about it. Instead of saying like, all right, let me just trick y'all motherfuckers into like what y'all think y'all want. Or let me just go ahead and do. They giving me the answer. You know what I'm saying? If a girl tell you, if you just be honest, uh, we can fuck. But you sit up and lie anyway. Mm -hmm. Like she just said, tell the truth and y'all can fuck. And she's like, if I get them this shit, they're going to buy it. They're going to feed into it. They're going to believe it. The consumer is dumb. You know what I'm saying? They want to be tricked. They don't. At base level, somebody told me at base level, people do not want to fucking care. Mm. They just want what they want. They want the music to be good. And people don't know what they like. They just like what they know. So what wh what are we saying here? Are we saying trick them by giving them um, Casanova, mm -hmm. but we bring them in, we 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 lure them in with Casanova, but we give them what we really want when they get here? That's literally all it is. And it, you have to gradually do it. You have to spoon feed it to people where it's so unnoticeable, and it's just like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like that nigga really did just. Think about it, baby came in here talking about rapping, trapping, selling dope. Years later, this nigga got a song with Kirk Franklin. Nobody said nothing about it. Mm -hmm. This is a gospel artist, but don't nobody say, he sold out. He got a song with Kirk Franklin. Or he too different. Niggas listen to that song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He make a song about uh, Black Lives Matter when the protests and stuff going on. Nobody says nothing. You want to know why? Because he gave them folks what they wanted. And when he slid in and did what he wanted to do and made it like a part of his uh, routine, didn't nobody care. It's crazy you said. We just had this conversation yesterday. I was talking about um, how like... Sometimes you gotta feed people med you gotta feed people medicine inside their candy, like you gotta trick them into taking that, that medicine. Yeah, I done had that conversation with plenty of people. Mm. Uh, Wayne was one of them folks that actually did it. This nigga made a whole fucking rock album. Nah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Because he was he gave you so much for so long, and then when he did do it, he was able to make you believe that shit. Mm. As long as Wayne been skateboarding, he should be a fucking um. He should be, he be a, a pro. He should be Tony Hawk by now. Thanks. But guess what? He done made you believe this shit for so long that he was able to sell you clothes with skateboards on them, yeah. put all of this shit in your face. I'm a rock star. I'm going to get a couple piercings, tattoos on my face, crinkle the dreads up, throw a scarf around my neck. Y'all believe it because we are dumb. <laughs> you feel me? As consumers, we are dumb, and we just want to feel like we're attached to the artist. And we want to grow with them. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. He's still a nigga from Baton Rouge. That ain't going to fucking... And he from New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. From New Orleans. Uh, where the fuck is he from? Wait. Holly Grove? Louisiana, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not too far from. Same shit, right? Three hours from Jackson. From okay. where I'm from. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, bro. When you say Jackson, every time you say Jackson, I want to ask, are you a football fan? I got you. I'm sorry. Nah, I ain't even no sports fan like talking about. 
I mean, I, I, I kept up a little bit with what was going on when, like, Dion was at, at home, but I, this shit consumes me, bro. Like, But you can't ignore the impact that he brought to Jackson, period, though. I ain't going to say it was like a, um, I can't ignore that. But what I will say, um, yeah, he he shined a light. For sure. He shined a light. I guess what I was going to say was going to be like, we had what we had before he got there. Um, but I guess we didn't have it in the magnitude that, you know what I'm saying, he brung it. Because For sure. I guess you can't just up, one person can't just up and put shit where shit ain't already yet. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like he can amplify it. But, like, if it's not there, it's not there. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? If he went, went to, like, a, he brought shit there, you know what I'm saying, to help it. But motherfuckers know Jackson State just from, like, the band, you know what I'm saying, the Sonic Boom Sonic of the Boom South, you know, crazy, because yeah. we getting shouted out in songs and stuff like that. You don't know much about the city, but you knew about Jackson State before Jackson State was, like, a Deion Sanders thing. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably why he went there, too. But yeah. it's funny because transitioning, like, that's kind of, like, what going into this, that's kind of what 85 South Show did to you. He was already <laughs> lit, right? They just gave you that platform, that opportunity, bro. Now, nah, I ain't going to bullshit it. Um, they turned you up. Yeah, they did. I ain't gonna lie about that. But you showed up. Though. Like, let's be fair. Mm-hmm. You showed up though. You was prepared. Yeah. So the thing was, I came with what I had. They just at their platform added to it. What I will say is, a lot of niggas that came on that show, bigger than me, more followers, more fans, and I just needed their platform. I had everything that they had been needing, wanting, looking for. And like when I got there, that shit was. Crazy. I worded like this. I ain't going to say I was like, I was making that shit happen. And it felt like for a little second that I was calling the shots because I was just like, shit, this y'all show. But I was like, what can I do to come on this motherfucker and give people a show? Like, motherfuckers, just come on here and rap, sit down, have a regular interview. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. When I got on there, I'm like, these niggas love to talk shit. I'm like, I'm talking about your ass. I'm talking about your ass. I'm finna roast you. Like, them niggas were like, well, hold on. And I was like, well, shit. In the middle of me doing my performance, I'm like, y'all niggas come up here, man, let's freestyle. And they like, oh, I bet. By the time we got done, them niggas like, shit, we can just do the fucking interview right here. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, it was crazy. That was one of the most iconic performances ever, bro. Appreciate it, appreciate it. And like, I'm not, it, it just was so, it was just slick. It was just like that. It was like, nah, this guy got it. Like, yeah. And that's after I was already introduced to you. Yeah. So like I see that I'm like, damn. That shit get like, I had to tell people sometimes it get really really wicked. It's Cause niggas ain't seen like the full scale of like my um, lyrical ability or the full scale of like my talent. And I was telling one of my homegirls, sometimes I get a feeling of anxiousness mm. because I be in rooms and only I know how big I'm about to be, and it's like. People years from now are gonna be like, oh, I knew to know him. I used to stay by him. Or he used to cut my hair. Or I remember that time he was in. And I'm just like, I sit there and have to bottle that shit up and just, you know, I'm humble about it. And I just have to be where I'm at and enjoy that moment, you know? I'm tired of being humble. Fuck that. I ain't gonna be tired of it. Nah, because the humble guy never went. I'm humble, but um, I just wear myself well. Somebody, I wear me well. But you can pop your shit in your songs. I don't really have no. Well, place I can to pop my shit. I can pop it. Not I, when I'm when I'm not uh, doing songs. Like it's just about how you put that shit together. Can I be honest? You, talk to me. I feel the same way you feel. Yeah. You know my favorite line to this date right now. What? Is niggas went and bought a house when he could have bought a verse. Niggas dumb as fuck. That's how I feel about me. Mm. <laughs> like, I feel that way about me. I didn't know how I felt about that line at first. I thought I, about it. I love it. I thought about it, and I was just like. Traditionally, what a nigga would do is buy a house. But I'm like, if you halfway there and you halfway popping and you buy that Drake verse, it makes a lot of fucking sense. And that was like a flex. When he did that shit, that was like a flex. When I heard that line, I was like, nigga, is you dumb? Am I going to choose you over buying a house and securing something for my fucking family? Or am I going to risk it on a feature from you? And I thought about it. I was like, but the nigga ain't wrong. No, fuck Drake. He ain't wrong. Fuck him. You think it's small, nigga. I'm talking about me. That's how I feel about Just me. with anybody. Like, niggas going to go buy a house. Niggas didn't get a buy an interview from me. That's how I feel. Like, I feel it. I feel, I feel it. Feel. Yeah. Like, when you remind me of when you said, yo, like, I be, you be anxious. You know, you be in a room and niggas don't ever know how, how big you going to be. Like, nah, because I be feeling that way, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, nah, nigga, mm-hmm. do you know who you sitting next to? And you can't. 
Well, you can't pop it too hard because you don't want to feel like you don't want nobody to think that you think uh, that you better than them. Facts. Like. Shit, two years from now, y'all niggas gonna be like, damn, we remember we interviewed that nigga. Mm-hmm. But right now, I just gotta be here and be in it. And, like, take this shit all in and act accordingly Facts. until I get where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. I'm tired yeah. of being here. Nah, don't get tired of it, bro. Fuck it you, keep you, it keep you. It keep you in a good space. What's your sign? Stopping dollars. Nigga, what's your sign, nigga? What's y'all? Stopping dollars. Them the only two signs <laughs> I The only two signs when, I know. When you was born, bro? Nah, August. In August. Yeah. Niggas is knocking on the door and shit. Niggas is different out here. We got company and shit. We just bust in this motherfucker. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. But yeah, uh, what's going on? We all right? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah, so, wait, nigga, I don't know what the, what sign is that? Leo. Oh, you're Leo. I'm about That's to, crazy because- um, I'm about to Leo ass along. <laughs> you hear people mm. say, you hear people say, like, y'all have, like, um- what is it called? Like, when you, all about me. Mm-hmm. You're giving me the opposite, though. You're giving me, like, humble, humility vibes. Like, um, I, I, study every, I study everything. Yeah. And what I've done over the years was I got a lot of Leo friends, and I've dated, like, Leo women. I take everything that people don't like about us, and I don't do it. Just like, what's your sign? I'm a Gemini. Yeah, so people always think y'all bipolar. We always think y'all flip the script. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I literally been around Leo so many, so much, and so many years that they annoy. I don't. I I personally don't click with Leos like talking about. For real? Yeah, nah. I don't. I don't never say I don't like nobody. I just don't like the type of shit we do. We in our feelings all the time, and this is what I've noticed from my friends and people that I've genuinely been super close to. We in our feelings. We insecure. We know that we are bigger to people than we think we are sometimes. And we use that to our advantage. Like, we, we the life of the party, but we so fucking insecure on the inside. We so small on the inside. But to everybody else, we are so big and we're projected, like, mm, on the outside. That big personality. We nag too much. We complain about a lot of shit. Um, sensitive. Um, we are leaders. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of good traits. But I've taken everything that I've seen other Leos do when they was complaining uh, I didn't see motherfuckers talk behind other motherfuckers back and see them and be like, hey, what's up, man? And I'd be like, that ain't right. So everything that Leos do that I don't like as a person and that other people wouldn't like, I take it and I don't do it. Mm. And I literally sit and I humble myself and I just be like, you know, when I walk in and people think I'm supposed to be like, I like to be with my friends and you know, you don't, unless you know my music or unless you know me, you don't know who's in charge. Mm. You don't know who the leader is. I like to just blend in and look normal. Now, granted, I'm going to blend in and look normal, but if I'm doing it, that means everybody else has to come in this motherfucker, dress like I'm dressed, smelling like I'm smelling, talking like I'm talking. You don't know who is the head, you know what I'm saying, who is the neck and who the shoulders. You know what I'm saying? And I learned how to humble myself and lead from behind. Like I tell some of my partners and I tell females that I'm with in some situations, I don't have to be the head of everything. I can be the neck. Mm. You can think, you can do whatever you want to do, but guess what? You can't move without this motherfucker. Right. You can't breathe without this motherfucker. You can't move without me. And so I'd be like, go ahead and lead. Because just like when I'm in the lead, I know the same thing. Like, if I ain't got nobody to support me and help me move, I can't do it. Mm. So everybody be thinking they in the lead, thinking they got shit, like, figured out. No, you need support. You need help. And everybody just needs to, like, know and understand and grasp that concept. No, you definitely need help. Yeah. Like, you can't do nothing without a team, for sure. No, for sure. How you feeling? How you liking, like, um, I like you getting closer to the industry. I, I, I don't know if you would say you in the industry yet, but. No. My, people be telling me, oh, you in the industry. You know this, you know. I ain't nowhere well, yet, you bro. You getting close. I mean, it's a couple of people I'll, hanging around. I'm going to tell you some something. Friends. I'm I'm like, nigga, I'm to my, like, fucking thread. You know what I'm saying? Away. It's just because it's always, it all it takes is one song, one hit. You know what I'm saying? I was talking to uh, Lou one day. He was like, he was in the studio with JD, and that nigga told him, no matter how bad you done fell off, no matter who you is, no matter if you're coming up, you done been in the game for 20 years and fell off for 10, you just always one fucking hit away. Mm. That's all it takes. One fucking song. Facts. And you be back in the game. Nah, facts. So, yeah. How annoying is that? I, I asked, uh, Seti about this and I was like what's worse the middle or like the bottom and like the middle it's so it's so frustrating the right? middle 
clear. Yeah. It's always the middle. Because when I'm at the bottom, I know the only way I can go is up. When you're right. at the middle, you don't know where you're going. And it give you a level of anxiety that's through this roof because you say that, you know you that close. Yeah, that too. But the beautiful thing about it is I just sat and told myself, like, dog, enjoy this struggle. Mm. Because when you get to everything you get to, it's only like I want more. And just to make it plain and simple, I like to give analogies when I'm talking so people know exactly what I'm saying. When you was in, like, second grade, you saw the fifth graders and was like, they look so big. I want to be in the fifth grade. You get mm-hmm. to fifth grade, this ain't shit. When right. you get fifth grade, you're like, I want to go to middle school and be a sixth grader. But then you get there, you see the eighth graders. Mm. So on, like, ninth grade, I want to be a senior. You get to senior, and now you're looking at them like, bro, you still in high school. Calm down. Like, you want a million dollars. Niggas who done had they a million dollars a million times, they're looking at you like, bro, calm down. you just yeah. so happy you're here. So I'd be like, shit, enjoy where you at. Like, make the most of it. Because when you get $100 million, you literally going to want 200 300 nice. 400 So, like, bro, just just chill. Are you just saying this? Or are you really there? I believe that. Is it is it hard for you? Or is that something that's coming easy? Nah. I'm practicing it. I, I've been practicing it. Um, And it was, like, coming out of, like I was telling you last year, this time I was, like, depressed. It's a lot of shit that I had to tell, teach, and show myself mm. and learn from, like, studying other artists like and studying you know what i'm saying my friends and how they moving and like other people around me like bro you literally just gotta enjoy where the fuck you at because it's gonna come a day when i wish i'm like man i wish i could just walk outside or go in the grocery store like i used to and nobody walk up to me for an autograph or nobody is like bombarding me at the mall like nigga i go to lennox all the time walk around shop go to bazaar bro i saw look i saw baby in the mall one day this is probably like 2019, 18, 18, maybe 19. I saw a baby in the mall, little baby, at Lennox. Didn't say nothing to him, walked straight past the nigga. What's crazy is he could not go in Lennox today by himself. No, he didn't have nobody with him. He was in that bitch. This is when he had a small little fro. He was in that bitch by himself. He can't go in there and do that. And you know what? Them niggas wish that they had the luxuries we got. We can go where we want, when we want. When them niggas move, they got to call security. They got to call four, five other niggas to come move. And guess what? If I got security, I got to pay these niggas. Mm-hmm. They got to be coming out. And of course, like, I got so much money that I ain't worried about it. But, bro, who wants to have to call somebody every time I'm going somewhere? I want to be able to do what I want to do. So while I'm in these moments, I enjoy them. And it teaches me, like, I tell people all the time, the shit that I get from being in these moments is a wisdom that I can't pay for. It ain't no amount of money I can pay to, like, you know what I'm saying, know some of the shit that I'm learning now. That's crazy because, like, you absolutely right, and I think that's where I get frustrated as an interviewer, yeah. right? Like, I'm watching my um, – I wrote this down. I don't even write things down, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just painting a picture. So I'm watching an interview with myself. I've actually uh, – I just did the interview with Don Cannon. Mm-hmm. And, like, I left. I'm like, it was lit. It was fire. I'm watching the interview. I'm like, this shit is the worst interview ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just watching it. And I'm like, bro, like, I wrote down, don't talk about – what you don't know about, right? Like, cause like sometimes I get in these spells where I do research and I do research and I try to talk about what I did research on, but even mm-hmm. still, it's, it's different from like doing research and actually knowing something. Yeah. And I got like I flourish in like conversations of like this, like struggle and like like well, where we at. You feel yeah. me? Like, that's why. I, and I'm and I wrote down mm-hmm. only talk about what you do not deviate. Like I said that I wrote it down on a notepad, bro. I'm mm-hmm. like. Stop talking about what you don't know about. Because I'm trying to talk about, the like, I know about it because I did the research. Yeah. But I ain't well-versed in it. Well, so, you know, my thing, I've always took the approach of when I got in the room and didn't know something, I could bring it up, but I allow people. One thing I've learned about people, they literally want to tell you everything. Facts. And all you have to do is just not ask them certain shit. Mm. You know, when you get in question, you get suspicious and you don't want to tell shit. You mm-hmm. don't want to say nothing. Hey, man, where the hoes at? What you mean with a hose at? <laughs> hey, man, you got some weed? Why? <laughs> like, what? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Nigga, you know I got a girl. Why you asking me what a hose? You know what I'm saying? You chill out, bro. Facts. When you get in a room and you, you got to make people think shit is their idea. Nah, facts. And people will literally tell you everything you need to know. Like, I done literally called somebody and asked a question about something as a basis. And they done told me everything I need to know. Not knowing that I wanted them to do that. I wanted to know mm-hmm. something. And I was like, hey, man. What's up with that goddamn da 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 da? And niggas be like, oh boy, did it. Don't know what's in there. And I'm over here like, mm hmm, hell yeah, yeah. Like I already knew it and I didn't know. No, I never knew. And they told me everything that I wanted to know. And it was just like, 
You yeah. absolutely right. I think um for me I was really just saying like you can't really sometimes you can't pay for wisdom. You can't pay that's something that you can't pay mm-hmm. for. You not like some experience. things you can't pay you can't for. Experience. Pay for. I, I'll be watching Nori and it's like some things you just can't like I can't rush into that. Like it's yeah, nothing nah. there's nothing you can do that's gonna get you there yeah. but time. And like, I tell literally. niggas all the time about me. I tell people and this is with people, with anybody. You are literally right in between where you want to be and where you need to be. Mm, You're not there because you don't know how to handle it yet, and you mm. think you know how to handle it. And I used to tell myself, like, last year and the year before that, my 30-year-old self is laughing at me right now because mm. I'm stressing so hard about how to get rich, how to make this money, what to do, what I need to do. And when I sat down and actually figured that shit out of my head, I was just like, damn, I see why bro laughing. Mm. Every time somebody tell me, you need to rap like Casanova, I'm like, hell no. And I get on songs and start making songs about bucking on that shit. Ain't nobody heard them, but I'm like, I'm going to fuck this shit. Niggas think I'm supposed to rap like a pimp all the time. 30-year-old me like, nigga, you are so stupid. Because if you knew better, you would just go ahead and just tell these folks anything, keep rapping this shit, and transition into what you want it to be. Mm. You have to use that shit as a vehicle. You mm. either going to be a stepping stone or you're going to be getting, you're either going to use this as a stepping stone or you're going to be getting stepped on. Facts. You feel me? So let me ask you this. How do you feel about the rapper casting over then? Because I feel like it's like, the actual rapper? Yeah, he's like the total opposite of Casanova. Oh, I like Casanova. When he I mean, first came out. outside of him, personally, but I'm saying like him coming as like this gorilla, this hard guy, and his name Casanova. That just fit for him. Um, shit, a lot of niggas ain't what they name say. <laughs> 50 Cent is a human. He ain't two quarters. I mean, <laughs> shit, I don't know. You feel me? Like, um, OJ the Juice Man. Like, I ain't never seen this nigga with no juice in my life. But... That just works for them niggas because it's like, niggas come up with all type of names, though. No, nah, facts. You feel me? So I just let people run with what they running with. Mm-hmm. But Casanova actually means, like, you know, you're a ladies' man. You yeah. slide with the ladies. You kind of, like, you know, you in there. And but so, then you open the door, you see this big, hard gorilla nigga, like, lifting 100 million pounds and shit. Been Gangsta Nova, god damn it. I don't know. <laughs> shit. Facts. So what you got going on now, man? I seen you just dropped, uh, of course, oh, man. super bad. Yeah, he's bad. He's um, bad. He's bad. I'm, was, super I'm bad. writing. I literally got in a groove today. My um, photographer hit me and was like, "We need to shoot some content for Valentine's Day, and I want to do this." And I literally got in a car today and wrote like three songs. Do like, you collab with writers or no? No, no. So I will tell. I will tell people like I don't let nobody write a verse for me, but I sing too. So if it was ever like a singing thing, I wouldn't mind people collabing, but I won't let nobody write a verse for me. Because I don't think, like, people can portray my story or portray what I'm feeling to people. And so it gets hard sometimes, but that's just one area I'm not willing to crack on. But if it was a song where I was, like, completely singing, I'm like, yeah, I'm singing. And singers do it all the time. But when it comes to me being, like, an MC and an actual rapper, nah. So what about even if, like, not let's say not a verse, right? Let's say you're in a studio. You get in the studio. You lay this whole thing down. And they be like, yo, you should say this and not this or like a word or two words oh i've had that happen with 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 homeboys or somebody yeah i could take that you're not writing a bar for me like you literally just niggas be like say it with some more conviction Mm. or just take one of them words out Mm. or just put this word in between those i'm like oh okay that's cool that's like um keeping me sharp on my skills but you're not actually doing the work for me and i tell my homeboy them the same thing you know what i'm saying like you putting too many words in that bar like Mm. you it make you off beat or like take this out or add this or just you know you got to you got to write just say it like this though and you know what i'm saying i don't mind that but as far as you actually writing this whole thing for me why don't you do it if you feel like you was going to write as good as me like mm. come on get on the song then like some people can't mm. say it like the things the way drake said Quentin Miller verses Mm-hmm. I probably would never listen to it if, if, I, if it was Quentin Miller. If you listen to Quentin, I listen to Quentin Miller sometimes. And I'm going to tell you something. I could not, I could not tell the difference between him and Drake. You could? Fuck no. No, nah, nah. Drake said it a little nah. different. I'm going to tell you something. Some people receive the message better depending on okay. who's delivering it. That nigga Quentin Miller got sauce like I heard that nigga nice. I, I, ain't gonna, yeah. I ain't gonna short, bro. I listened to a song and I was like, let me see what niggas talking about. Or like, if it's that big of a deal. And I'm like, bro, nah, this literally is what... Um, this is like Drake's sound for the whole 2014, uh, 15, 16 era. Like, I could tell, like, that shit was hand stitched by Quinn. Like, I'll tell you one thing. I definitely like uh, Beyonce, um, Drunk in Love Over Future. 
I'll tell you that. Yeah. But it was <laughs> Future's sure. idea. And like, like I say, like, sometimes, depending on who delivering the message, motherfuckers going to receive it. Because if Future had came out with that shit, motherfuckers would be like, you gay. <laughs> you feel me? Like, yeah. drunk and yeah. And not that, you know what I'm saying, not to be thrown like that. That's no. like Lil Yachty coming out with, uh, I mean, how could he even come out with? Uh, and I shouldn't say that. Like, it's, it's just certain ways, like, some people ain't going to um, receive it. The same fucking way. Nah, I don't fact. twist it's my true. fucking words. I'm not saying nobody is gay or nothing, but you know, I when I heard it because it was so embedded in my head that Beyonce, 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 and we just now finding out Future wrote that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, but it's just like Sway Lee re- probably realized like I can't fucking sing Formation. Like it's I'm gonna lie. get this shit to Beyonce because I know she gonna deliver it the way that I'm hearing it in my head. You know what I'm saying? So you write, you, 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 you want to do some writing for like R&B artists? Yeah, I write. I write for people all the time. I don't, um, one thing I don't do is short myself when it comes to this. And I have to tell people, like, I use myself as an instrument. Mm. And uh, with whatever you're doing, like, I sit at home and I make voice impersonations or I mimic people. I use that when I go to the studio. Mm. I done literally been in the studio and had to have, like, my Barry White going on. And I did not have females in the studio and had to moan on songs and, like, do weird shit. But it's like I don't sell myself short, and I'm more concerned about the art versus, like, how I'm looking. No. So, yeah. I, man, it's... I can like, see so much going to the artist. I can see that. I can see. Yeah, I done wrote, like, R&B songs. I got songs on my phone where I, like, write for female rappers that I just ain't been able to get to certain people. But once they get there, they're going to be like, damn, where you been? You know who I think you could write for? She probably would never accept it. Who that? Lady London. She oh, called. Y'all crazy she together. called. Like, yeah, that she called. Be crazy. You know who I would love to write for though? Like City Girls. Oh yeah. Or Sweetie. See, I'm thinking about somebody on your so level. Tight. Shit. Like you nobody... and Lady London on a song. But you know together? what? Ain't nobody not on my level. It's just that. And that's the thing. Like I just got so much up here. And that's why I'm like, now it's one of the moments where I gotta contain it. Because okay. you just like somebody on your level. I'm like, I'm on every level though. Not you good. feel me? I mean, it's and money. so it's like, I can do what, bro. The, I'm gonna tell you the hardest thing for me to do is to not rap um, on the lyrical ability or perform on the talent level that I am. And I done try to like dumb myself down sometimes. And I done been in the studio with other writers, and I'm just like, oh yeah, nah, this don't work for me. Like somebody, I probably couldn't write for the Migos. But you could write for City Girls if that ain't yeah because I got like because um I don't know why but it just comes from a place of we feel like I feel like I know what females like to hear because I study music okay. or I know what I would like for a female to say to me and through the experiences of me dealing with a female okay that makes like sense. I was writing in one song about like um somebody invites you over and they cycle on. Or you have like, um, what the fuck was I saying? You ever been like kissing, sucking on a whole neck and like sucking them titties? Then you ready to pull them pants out? You like, yeah, she in there. We, we, we rolling now. Yeah. You pull up pants down. <clears throat> my cycle on. Bitch, why you ain't say all that for my dick got hard? Like, what? And so I could talk about that from a female <laughs> perspective because they know in their head, like, I was saying, this, that's what I said in the song. I just let them suck my titties because my period on. Like, bitch, why you didn't tell me your period was on before I got my dick hard like this? And you just sat up here and let me suck on your neck, you know what I'm saying, put my tongue down your throat, and now I go to kissing on the stomach, about to pull a pan down. No, 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 my cycle on. Why do girls play with niggas like that, man? It's not safe. Ladies, that's not safe, man. You know what, though? Y'all just wanted a little something, something, you know? You want to know that if he was going to get you to that point, he was able to, like, do his thing, you know what I'm saying? So... It's all good. He understands. It's you, all man. good, I baby. Man. I ain't tripping. Those times is long gone, man. But I appreciate you for pulling up, dog. Um, anything nah, man, else you got you. going on that we don't know about? Man, working on project after project, just being the handsomest nigga alive to no fault of my own. God made it that way, so if you're mad, you got to call the hotline, baby. He always on the main line. <laughs> you feel me? The main one. Hey, the main line. I'm just working, man. I got two or three projects dropping this year, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Two I, of them. I appreciate you. You talked. Yeah. You said uh, two years, man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be glad you came on. Nah, two years. I want to come back. We are gonna link back up, and it's gonna yeah. be crazy. I keep telling people. I say, yo, I can't wait till I get that 
that J that Jay Z David Letterman interview because like that's where I'm gonna be at, and I hope everybody I interview be where Jay Z at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's my goal. So I, I was watching you. your platform. I'm like, damn, it take a lot for niggas to just get to this point where you at now. It does. For sure. Yeah, for sure. and I'm like, niggas probably don't even know that. You was going through the most trying to just get your first person to interview and just doing it with, like, anybody. You and know what's funny? I, mm -hmm. I stick to the script. I'm not doing it with anybody, but I still do that to this day. I literally mm -hmm. just call my team. I say, yo, we're going to just schedule Wednesdays and Thursdays. And even if we don't get the biggest artists, we're going to come in here, we're going to get it done with somebody. I literally just said that. Yeah. I'm still on the same thing. Yeah. I'm not stopping. You want to... Oh, uh, this is thing like uh, take what you can get until you can get what you want. For sure, because yeah. who knows? You might blow up tomorrow, or the next person I interview might blow up the next day. And guess Never what? Fucking no, it's lit. Jim Jones had the chance to sign Drake. Facts. Shit, it's a it's a couple niggas that had a chance to sign people. Yeah, yeah, and they didn't. They so. Didn't. I mean, you just can't. You just never know. Niggas went and bought a house when they could have bought a verse. That's my. Hey, that's my. That's my. Listen, that's how I feel, man. I appreciate you, man. Tell everybody where to follow you at and everything. Hey, man, it's A.K. Double E.M. You probably want to be him. Bad bitches smile and crack their teeth every time they see him. Follow me on Instagram at A.K.E.E.M. underscore underscore Ali or at Kimi dot Casanova. Um, on Twitter as Akeem Ali, Facebook Akeem Ali, TikTok Akeem Ali. Follow me or swallow me. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Akeem Ali, J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. This is a wrap. We out. Ciao, baby.